Well, hello there, friends. It's apple pie day today. I made an apple pie tartatin. I'm going to show you how to make it. It's an upside down apple pie. Really easy to make, and I promise you, you're going to love it. Remember, thumbs up if you like the video, subscribe to the channel, and ring that bell. Stay tuned. We're going to make it together. Well, hello there, friends. Today is apple pie day. Yep, so I'm gonna make you a French apple pie. Tartatin. It's an upside down apple pie. And uh, so the story goes, <laughs> in the 1800s, uh, two sisters called the Tatin sisters at a restaurant in Paris. And, uh, and one of them was the pastry chef. She made the, the apple pie. She forgot to put the dough underneath. She must have been drinking some serious wine, right? So her sister said, well, put the dough on the top. We'll bake it that, that way and we'll flip it. Here comes the tartata. That's exactly what we do. We cook the apple in the bottom of the pot, in the bottom of the pan. We put the dough on top. We bake it. And when it's cooked, we flip it. It's a classic. You'll find it in every French bistro. Every French restaurant has a tartata. Sometimes they put uh, cinnamon in it. I don't like cinnamon, so I'm not going to put it in there, but it's really up to you. I'm going to show you how to make it the easiest way. I've made it a million times, different ways, some more complicated than others today. I created this recipe for YouTube to make it simple, okay? So we're going to make a dry caramel, and a dry caramel is where we put sugar, and we melt it slowly until it's got um, a mahogany color. And then we're gonna take the apple, turn the heat. I don't want it to be too hot, otherwise I'll burn the, the sugar before it has time to melt. We want it to have a nice mahogany color and you're gonna see what's gonna happen. It's gonna happen in front of your eyes, my friends. So I gotta keep an eye on it. I don't wanna do too much. So I put just enough sugar right now to cover the bottom of the pan. And then I'm gonna add a little bit more. I'm gonna add a little bit more as it cooks, okay? So this is, um, Three quarter cup of sugar, and then we got a four ounce of butter. We're gonna make a caramel with sugar and butter. Sugar and butter, instead of sugar and water. We like butter better. We like butter better, I love saying that. So, <laughs> uh, the apple, I'm using Granny Smith apple. The reason why I'm using Granny Smith apple, my friends, is because they are quite acid. And since there is a lot of sugar in there, and, uh, and, and the fat from the butter, the caramel is gonna offset that acidity. But use whatever apples makes you happy. I find that the Granny Smith works the best, but it's really up to you. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna peel them, and, uh, and oh, when you buy them, try to buy them all to be the same size, except one or two, you buy big, and you'll see what happened, what I'm gonna do with a big one, okay? So what we do is we peel the top with a vegetable peeler, and then we peel the bottom with a vegetable peeler. And then we just grab the apple and we just go like this, you see? See, a child could do this, literally. Okay, and it's very simple. I mean, you can go around the apple and do it as well. I just find this is the quickest way. And when you have to do three, 400 apple a day, trust me, you'll find it then it's a very easy way to do it. Okay, you know what I forgot? I forgot my apple corer. Don't go anywhere. I got it. Thank goodness I got another kitchen over there. <laughs> My apple corer. And this is a really cool tool, uh, tool folks. It uh, help us, I mean, if you don't have one of those, you just cut them in half, cut them in half again, and then remove the core. It's not that difficult either, but this is a cool tool, a tool. You should be able to get that anyway, you know, your target, wherever you go. And uh, so you see what happened? It's got teeth in there, right? So you take it, and you, you go like this, so you use the teeth, right? So now you have to aim. The idea is to come out on the other side, not over here, not over here, not over here, right? It's to come out right there. So what you do is you aim, and then when you're going in, you twist your end, and hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I come out, huh, not too bad. You see, I haven't been drinking anything. <laughs> so here we go, friends, see? Ready? Pretty simple, eh? Oh, caramel, need more. Need more, see? That, that sugar just melted, perfect. So here we have it. Put a little bit more in there. You shouldn't be talking as much as I am talking and pay attention. 
All right? Okay, so now that we have it removed, what do we do? We cut in half, and we cut it in half again. Oh, except I want to keep a whole half, and you'll see why in a minute I want to keep a whole half. So we got, all right? So now normally, like I say, you put water. You make caramel with, uh, with water. But I got enough water in the apple, trust me. I don't need any more water, right? So I'm going to put a little more sugar on top. And as soon as all of our caramel, as all of our sugar has melted, we're going to put butter with it. Yes, butter. <laughs> yeah. We're going to let this melt it. And don't be afraid. You know, people said, oh, don't touch the caramel. You're going to touch it the minute you put the butter in it, trust me. So don't worry about touching it. Don't worry about touching it. Okay, we're going to touch it plenty the minute we put our butter with it. I just want to, I want it to uh, uh, um, brown evenly. I want an even color. It's a very simple way to do it, friends. There's so many ways to do a tartata. I've made it so many different ways. Some of it, you caramelize the apple in there, and, uh, and, 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 and then you put the dough at the end. I'll show you. So now we're going to wait until this is a, a mahogany color. See, it's beautiful. We're going to wait until it's mahogany color. Now, you have to be careful because it's going to start smoking. You don't want to go over that. See, it's starting to smoke over right here. And we are over 200 degrees. We are almost at 400 right now already, you see? So be very careful. If you ever get some on you, my friends, let's say you get some of that caramel on you. Uh, the only thing to do is to put your hand into the sink and let it run, let it run, let it run, let it run. The idea not to burn yourself too much is to make sure then the... Um, uh, 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 under the skin, the flesh under the skin doesn't get burned, and that's the best way to cool it. A friend of mine, a fireman, told me that. All right, so we have a nice color. A little bit, a little bit darker. I want it just a little darker. You see, it's starting to smoke a little bit. I have to be careful not to smoke it too much, but it's still not. It's still a very light caramel. You see, it's not too dark. And then we're going to put the butter in there, friends. So I'm going to turn it off. Now I'm going to put the butter. And I have four ounces of butter. Four ounces of butter. Mix that up really good. Be careful. It's that, it, this, you don't want to let the kids do it. This is very, very dangerous. There's no heat. You see? Make sure you clean the side. By the way, I'm using an oven-proof non-stick fry pan, oven-proof non-stick fry pan. Because this is going to go in a fry pan in the oven directly. All right, the heat is off. The butter has cooled the caramel. It's avoiding from cooking. So it's not going to continue burning right there. And now what we're going to do, friends, we're going to wait about 15 minutes for the caramel to cool. And then we're going to take our apples, we're going to put them on top, and then we're going to put a, a pie dough on top of it, and we're going to bake it. It's really that simple, not complicated. The secret is how to put the apple correctly. I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to come back in about 10, 15 minutes when this is not solid, but solidified enough so I can put the apples in it, <clears throat> in it excuse me, without first burning my fingers, and second, it'll help... Uh, the apple set. All right, so we're going to wait about 10, 15 minutes. Okay, so we'll be right back. Okay, so caramel has an opportunity to set a little bit. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the apples and we're just going to set them. And, uh, and the fact that your caramel is, uh, is, is hard in a little bit, a little bit, um, it makes it a lot easier for you to stand your apples up, you see? And... Uh, and that's all it is to it. You want to put them as tight as you possibly can, friends. As tight as you can possibly pin. So now you see why I was not too concerned. Oh, come back over here. You. Um, about adding, um, and you know, you got to put the apples up, standing up. Why I was not too concerned about adding water to my caramel. 
because obviously the uh, uh, apples got the acidulated water on it, plus they have a lot of water on their own, you see? So put them up. Make sure they're standing up, okay? And you want to put as much as you possibly can, friends. And when you don't think you can put any more of it, then put a little more, okay? And squeeze them as much as you can. Remember on that big apple, we're going to put it right in here. And now we have to fill the, uh, the, the space. We have to, oh, I lost one. Um, and uh, so we have to fill the spaces, so we're going to do it with little pieces of apple. Smaller pieces, that is. Smaller pieces, you see? And don't worry too much about how on the side it is, because it depends the fry pan you have, depends the size of apple you have. You're going to have a little bit of a difference. I'm trying to put too much of it, too many of them. Yeah, they just don't want to go in there, so they're not going to go in there. So what we're going to do, we're going to slice them even smaller, and try to put as much as you possibly can. Don't worry about if they're little pieces. The, the, the secret is to fill as much of the holes as you possibly can. Fill it up as much as you possibly can because what's gonna happen is the, um, the apples are gonna shrink, my friends. And they're gonna shrink, and they're gonna shrink, and they're gonna shrink. And then we're going to have a lot of empty spaces. We don't want any empty spaces. I think that's it. I think I got a little too much. See if I can put a piece right here. Yeah. And, and whatever we see here doesn't really matter. Doesn't really matter because this is the inside and we're going to look on the, on the other side. That's why I put the apple this way, you see? And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little sugar on top. Just a little sugar. Then I'm going to put the pie dough. The pie dough is a recipe that I produced. It's uh, there's a video on there, or you can use a pie dough, your favorite pie dough, whatever it is. You can even use puff pastry dough as well if you like. Okay, let me wash my hand real quick. You can use puff pastry dough as well. It'll work just the same. I mean, different kind of dough, but it'll work the same. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my dough on it. What I like to do is fold it in quarters. So I put it this way, and then I put it this way, so it makes it easy, you can't lose this way. And then what we're gonna do, friends, we're gonna put it inside. See, so it has to be a little bigger than your, your fry pan, or whatever mold you're gonna use. You can use it in a cake pan. A lot of people use cake pan to make your top that time. So it's really up to you what you wanna use. And then what we're going to do, we're going to take a fork and we're going to put a couple of holes in there. We don't need to make that many. And we're just going to pop it in, in the oven. The oven has to be preheated at 400, 400 and a quarter. Depends the dough recipe you're following. If you're doing puff pastry, it's 400. Depends the dough you're following, okay? We're going to pop them in the oven and when they're beautifully cooked, we're gonna flip them on the other side. One more thing, very important, friends. Do not forget to put a cookie sheet underneath because what happened is the caramel is gonna bubble up and then it's gonna go in the bottom of the oven and you're gonna be sorry you forgot the cookie sheets. All right, so I'm gonna pop it in my preheated oven and I'll see you when it's finished. Okay, friends, it's been about 35 minutes. Depends the dough, depends the temperature of the oven you're cooking, you could take 25 to 35 minutes. You'll have to look at it. When the dough is light golden brown, you're ready to go. So here it is. Voila. So this, my friends, at this point is very, very dangerous. Meaning then, um, super, super hot. The caramel is liquid. And the pie is going to come out pretty easy, but we have to be very, very, very careful with the whole thing. So I have a plate that is just big enough to put on top of it. But as you can see, it doesn't stay in it because it's actually bigger. And a smaller plate would be kind of dangerous. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let it go like that. And then I'll, I'll move it slightly before I pie. Then I take one of those large towels and I want to make sure it's super, super tight. See? Tight, tight, meaning like there's no much movement 
between the, the plate and the fry pan. I'm going to remove this, which is very not a good idea to remove a thing, but I have to remove it because i got to flip the pan now. All right? That's why I like to use a fry pan in a way it makes it it's easy, but you can use a cake mold. You can use anything you want with it. And then what we're going to do now, we have to be very careful and very quick, and we're going to flip it. Oh, and we're losing a little bit of caramel, so we're going to push it because I, I, my plate was a little too big, but I think we're going to be just fine. We just push it, and voila. Voila, 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 my friends. We have a beautiful, beautiful tartata. A little bit messy, but we can fix all this. We lost a little bit of the caramel and a little bit of, uh, but it's okay. We're going to fix all this. So now, you'll see in no time at all, this is going to get very dull. It's going to get very dull looking. And so... You can put, in France, what we do, we put some abricot jam. You can put abricot jam or you can put apple jelly. And, uh, and we'll, I'm going to put it right there on a fry pan. Oh, see, that's why you never, you always make sure you put a towel. And see, I took it out because I made a mess out of it. But always make sure you put a towel so you don't burn yourself. So what we're going to do, we're going to take some... Uh, 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 Apple jam, apple jelly, apple jelly or abricot jam, whatever you want. You want to get it warm, and we're going to rub it on it to make it nice and shiny. Okay, we remove all that stuff out of here. Yeah, always make sure you leave one of those in there. All right, so we're going to put this on there. We're going to make it nice and shiny, and we're going to wait a little bit, and then we're going to serve it with a, um, uh, a caramel sauce and a vanilla ice cream. I'm going to show you the perfect lab, but I have to wait for it to cool a little bit. But I want to show you the really quick, that trick about letting the uh, uh, apple jelly melt so we can rub it on it. Just apple jelly. And we just want to brush it on there, you see? You see, immediately, you can see the benefit of doing this. You see? Really simple. And then we're going to make it look real pretty. With a little powdered sugar, and we have ourselves a beautiful ta ta ta. Really simple. So, I'll be back in a few minutes, friends, when this is nice and cool, and we'll do it. We'll serve a nice plate. All right. So, we'll be back in a few minutes. All right, friends. Well, it's cooled enough, so I'll be able to take a bite of it. So, see, I put some powdered sugar on it, and I put the um, the apple um, uh, jelly. On top of it, I got a caramel sauce that I make with the caramel the same way I make the caramel, except to cool it. Uh, instead of putting butter, I put heavy whipping cream and, and white chocolate. I'll make a video on that for the um, caramel sauce. It's delicious. So all we're going to do is we're going to take a piece of it, and, uh, and we want to be generous. And, uh, and all we're going to do is just I'll show you the way I served it all those years. And uh, I just take a piece right there. It's beautiful. Let me tell you. Hey, you can serve it warm or you can wait for it to cool. Either way, it's going to be delicious, I promise you. All right? And then you put a, uh, a, a, sc a scoop of ice cream on here right there. And then I take the caramel sauce that I got right there and I go like this. <laughs> And then a little more powdered sugar. And voila. Ladies and gentlemen. Delicious. This is like, uh, look at this thing. Uh, let me not move the plate so much so they can get in there. And, and let me tell you, this, my friend, is as good of an apple pie with very little dough. Sometimes I find apple pie that have too much dough. This has very little dough. Oh, mm. and with the ice cream on top of it, let me tell you, folks, this is as good. Mm. It's as good of an apple pie as you can make. Remember, some people put cinnamon in it. I don't really care for cinnamon, but it's really up to you. I hope 
you make it remember thumbs up if you like the video don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell thanks for watching we'll see you soon for another fantastic video